Hi, TG Watkins here with SimplerTrading.com, and we're going to be going over some tips of how to become a professional trader. All right, so the first thing that I would think of when it comes to becoming a trader, I know it seems kind of counterintuitive, but make sure you have a primary source of income. It takes a long time to learn how to trade. It takes a long way at time to figure out your path, and it, you're going to be losing some money. You know, this is a skill that takes a lot of time to really learn. And so you also have to make sure that you have money that you can live off of, you know, separate aside from what you trade, because in the beginning, your trading money should be money that you don't have to touch. You need to be able to afford to lose money. You need to be able to have that money grow slowly. It might not even grow for months at a time. And so there's a psychology also that if you're trying to live off of the money that you're trading with or your trading income, it can put some undue stress on your trading, thinking, I got to make this trade. I got bills to pay. I need this one to work out. Or if you start making wrong trades and you're losing money, you're like, man, uh, this next trade, it's got to work. Uh, now I'm going to double up because it's going to work and I need to make up for the losses that I had earlier. So if you can just help separate your trading path and your trading skill and you know the, the goal of what you're doing there separate from what you need to live and survive and provide for you or your family, that would really help. Um, so that's kind of the, the first things first is look at this as extra until you can actually really do something more major or have built up enough of a trading capital that uh, little profits can actually um, pay your bills. So make sure you've got that taken care of. Uh, beyond that, paper trade. Um, I know that there are some arguments out there that uh, people say, well, you know, especially if you're trading options, the fills won't be accurate because, you know, paper trading, they get filled right away and that's just not real world. Fine, so be it. But my contention is that you should paper trade because if you're new to a trading platform, you're going to push the wrong button. I've done it. <laughs> we still do it. You're going to push the wrong button and you're, you're going to lose money just because you push the wrong button. Uh, you're going to buy, press buy when you meant to sell and you're going to have an extra zero when you only wanted two or something like that. There's just a lot of stuff that's going to go on. Make sure you learn your system and make sure you get that down. Um, also, if you are new to this, learn what the market does. Just spend time with the market. I've had so many friends actually tell me like, oh, well, when I get enough money, then I'll learn how to trade. And I tell them, you should be practicing now because when you do have enough money that you want to start trading, you're going to start from zero as far as your skill and your knowledge, and you're going to have money. You're going to want to use that money, and then you're going to lose some of that money. So how about in the meantime, while you are working to earn that money, how about you go take the time and learn how to trade now so that when you have the money, you'll have the skill at the same time, and then you won't be wasting any time. So I think paper trading is really good. It just helps get you familiar with the market. Spend time in the market. There are seasons. There are times when the market's easy, when the market's hard. Uh, just learn how the market moves, and by just paper trading and being in it, that will help you. Uh, another one that will really help is find a mentor. Uh, I had, you know, I, I didn't, yeah, I had some mentors who I got really close with and they could answer phone calls from me and help me. And they really took me under their wing. Now, maybe we don't always have that kind of access to some traders who are kind of mentor ish, but go find a course or go find other traders like myself or people who are trying to teach you, uh, and then take what they've done and internalize it. Now, not everybody's going to work for you. There are so many different styles of trader traders out there or trading that's out there. You're going to have to go around. It might be difficult to find the kind of trader that resonates with you, works with your style, works with what you're trying to accomplish, works with your ability of can you trade at work or do you stay at home? Do you need quick returns, long returns? Are you investing? Are you trying to sell uh, credits? Like what are you trying to do? So you got to find the kind of trader that resonates with you for that. And then it takes time to kind of learn their style. So just because you've signed up for somebody, maybe get to actually see what they do for a while. You know, just watch them. Don't don't take trades right right away. You know, go figure out if they work for you. The other thing I would say is it is it's going to be a little bit difficult finding that person. I can't tell you how many times that when I was trying to learn how to trade, uh, I'd put some money here, I put some money there, I'd sign up for this program, sign up for that program, and I felt like I really just didn't get anything out of it. So it is a tough road to even go find somebody teach you how to trade for what you're looking for. It's, it's just tough out there. Uh, everybody's trying to sell something basically. And, um, you know, there are good people out there, of course, but you just have to figure out what works for you and where you want to put your money and your time and your education. After that, 
Um, once you have started trading, once you're familiar with your trading style, your, your trading platform, maybe you found somebody that you like to follow and you've learned their ways and you're starting to internalize that, and actually take the trading for yourself because you understand what they're teaching. I think that's also a big thing is, you know, you can take trades from traders like me or John Carter or whatever, and, you know, just follow the trades that they send you and tell you to trade. But really, if you're going to learn how to do this and you want to trade your, for yourself, you're going to have to internalize this and figure out how to do it without the help of professional traders at some point. Yeah, we're here to help, but you know, you're going to need to do this on your own too. So that's what I mean by prove your track record to yourself. Keep a list, keep a log, make sure that while you're paper trading, you know that when you do actually move money to that account and you actually start trading money for real, you already know that you've got a winning ratio, that you make more wins than losses and that your wins are bigger than your losses. And so that'll be an easy transition from paper trading and practicing to the real thing. Because there will be a little bit of a psychological thing. You're like, okay, I've really got money on this and now I could actually be losing money. And it could be a, a little bit of a transition while you go through that as well. And then when you are trading well and you're making money, and if you're trying to do this professionally, and let's say, you are trying to do this to leave your day job or something. Well, as you make money, put that money someplace safe. I've made a lot of money in my trading career. I've also given a lot of money back. And it is one of the things that when you kind of hit a high water mark or you've had a really good win streak, it might be good to take some of that money and just put it someplace safe. Put it back in your bank. Put it in real estate. I don't know. Find a place, some, something else. Just do something to where it's protected a little bit because I can tell you I've had some really good wins uh, that I've actually just vaporized. You know, I had a really good tr streak and I thought I was on fire and just something changed. And then I just whittled all of those gains right back down to where I began. And it would have just been better if I had taken half the money I made and go put it someplace because even if I whittled half of what I made back down, at least I'd be half ahead because I put that stuff someplace else. So just make sure you lock in profits put it someplace, take it away from the market and put it someplace that just is protected a little bit better than the kind of trading that we do in the stock market. So I think if you kind of follow these basic guidelines and rules and give yourself time and not the pressure of needing to make money in order to survive and pay bills, I think in the course of time, you will get where you want to get. And then you can actually you know, leave that day job if that's what you're trying to do. Or if you are retired, you can sustain your retirement. And, uh, you know, I even know people who are trading for their, their kids or grandkids college fund. So there's all sorts of reasons that people are trading. And once you can prove to yourself that you can trade, you're a professional trader. So get out there, do it, spend some time with it, figure out your rules and uh, go have a good time with it. All right, guys. Thanks again. We'll see you later. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me 